Hey guys, it's me, Mike at the Battle Axe. Um, just coming with the videos that I promised about the phases that I'm going to be going through when I'm making this, this gym, this warehouse gym. Thank you, Gina, for letting me borrow your iPad, my sister. I'm really nervous right now because if I drop this bitch, I am literally going to be even more in debt. So. But anywho, let me go ahead and get started and uh, try to learn what's going on here with the whole switcheroo of the camera. But I'm not really sure if you guys are going to be able to do this real quick. Um, Basically what we're doing is this this whole concept here with the rack will be right here. This is Rogue Fitness, so you guys can pretty much see it. It's pretty sexy right there. Rogue Fitness is super popular with the whole concept. Like with CrossFit, it's super popular, but it's actually a really good company. Some of their stuff is overpriced, but truthfully, most of their stuff is actually 100% worth it. Um, this is going to be the, the squat rack, and that's going to be the yoke right there. Super easy to assemble, so I should be getting the yoke done by myself today. I'm trying to learn this bad boy right here. But, um, yeah, pretty much that's going to be it. It's the tools, and this is exactly what I promised with the whole the Atlas stones, as you can see. Um, basically, what's going on here is that I pretty much labeled the different size molds. I got the big one, that big bastard right there is going to be a 200 pounder, if you guys can see that real quick. Um, and that's pretty much it. I can pretty much generalize that. It's going to be a lot of work with the cement, but I finally got everything in there. The wheelbarrow is going to be there. Um, you have to put them in these buckets. If you guys see the any kind of preparation with Rob Orlando, these are his stones. Some of you CrossFitters there out there are probably getting wet right now because this is a CrossFit Atlas stone, I guess. But... Um, Rob Orlando was an ex strongman, and he actually makes his own molds, and they're fantastic. They're a lot easier than the Slater molds, if you ask me. Um, so you put them in these buckets to maintain them. Um, previous stones, you'd have to put in tires or sand, but the reason why these molds hold a little stronger is they're a little tougher than the, than the Slater stones, as far as the outside. So they hold their shape pretty well. But if you want to go 100% and be 100% sure that there's no give to the stone, you can use small tires or put them, put the actually stone in like a, a pit of sand, but I don't got those kind of, that kind of stuff. So that's the 200 pounder, 173 pounder, and this little girl is for 73. So this probably be a lot of starter stones. Um, the wheelbarrow, well, I'll be mixing all the cement, obviously all the cement over there, the silicone spray, kind of extra stuff. And um, actually that's exactly how we're gonna get started. So. I'll keep you guys posted. It's also a million degrees inside of here already with the humidity, but uh, I'll keep you guys posted. Hope everything goes cool. All right? Cool. All right, guys. This is the second part here. I'm by myself, so pardon the, first of all, the mess. I really don't care about that, but uh, the shakiness and stuff because making this shit is hard. I don't care how easy these fuckers make it look on the videos. It's, <laughs> sorry, it's a hard one-man job, but anywho. This is how cement was presented, how they told me to make it. Um, a little chunky, but not able to stick. It should be chunky, but just slide right off of that, okay? So it shouldn't be soupy at all. That's how uh, Rob O did it. A couple videos on the YouTube, you see it. Um, and basically, here's the first guy. She's the little girl right here, so. You see the zip ties there? It doesn't really demand screws. I saw a review once for these guys that said it needed screws. It doesn't. It needs zip ties. It's very easy. You don't even got to zip tie every hole. Um, that's how I saw Rob do it. So if the man does it himself, I think I do it myself. Um, with a zip tie on every other hole, you should be fine now. I sprayed the silicone spray, as it says, liberally, which is a great use of the word, all the way inside on the lip. It's very important here on the lip because you always get residue and overrun on there um, and basically I'll be pouring into that little by little and shaking it around now I don't, they say to recommend a sander or a, a, a buffer or something that vibrates <laughs> That's funny. Uh, and place it on the side here so it shakes it up and all the bubbles come up I don't have any of that right now actually so what I'm gonna use is this busted old fan now this fan on high vibrates like a mofo so that's the reason why I'm making it over here, that I'll make it close to the fan, place it on the fan with a towel on the metal so it doesn't ruin the mold, and it'll go ahead and vibrate as much as possible. So I'll keep you guys posted, and uh, we'll keep making these bad boys as we progress into the bigger stones, and just the kind of demands that's going on around here. All right, guys. All right, guys, this is uh, just finishing up with the first stone. 
It took me about a good 30 minutes, honestly, even for just a, a 12 inch sphere. But uh, it is a little bit messy of a job, so you gotta make sure you clean up the, the, the mold so you don't mess it up. I learned a couple things along the way. Um, if you do it in your own facility or your own garage, put something down because no matter how tight you think the straps are on there, it's not on there as tight as you think, obviously, because it's water. So I put some extra ones just in case. Um, so it's a learning experience. It's a 73 pound stone, so it, it took about a whole bag, and you got to keep that, that cement moving. Um, the fan worked okay, but unless I have something better, that's about a, a useless idea. But uh, I did put the little the towel um, that was suggested just to collect the moisture. You see this, the cement settling on there. And uh, when it settles some more, I'll go ahead and just like recap it just a little, but it's looking pretty good. You can see just it's starting to settle down. Probably give it another shake or two and then just leave the stone alone for a while. Um, but now I'm on to that one. And then lastly, that big monster is probably going to murder me and uh, probably need some beers or something. But uh, I'll keep you guys posted. I'll probably wait till I get to the last one because I'm starting to get dirty. And I don't want to mess up this, uh, this iPad. My sister will kill me. So uh, I'll probably get back on it a little bit. All right, guys. Cheers. All right. So uh, we're in the last phase of the stones. I went through five 80-pound bags. And I was lucky enough that a little bit is left over right there so that I can continue to kind of top these off. Uh, here's a little girl here. Um, you see there's that uh, spacing there. Small spacing, but we worked at it. I tried to use a compressor to vibrate them as much as possible, but um, it didn't do the best of jobs on the larger stones. So I just kind of want to give it a trial and error, and if it kind of turns out shitty, then next time around, I'll just go ahead and use, I'll just rent a buffer, like for waxing cars and stuff. As you can see, this one turned out beautiful, but so far it's still got a, got a little ways to go. And it'll keep kind of settling little by little. Sorry for the shaking, guys. This iPad's kind of crazy. Uh, this is the biggest one. It obviously took like about two, and, two full bags, two and a half bags, and you can see that it's starting to settle real quick. And um, it drips all over the place. If I can, not if. When I do this again, I'll definitely, definitely use it in a different, uh, different style. I'm going to put some serious cardboard down or wood down. Um, it leaks a little stone, maybe I use a little too much water, but obviously it's not watertight, so the water's going to seek out, um, seep out. But, but that's pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go to lunch because I'm dying. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and start the yoke over there with my brother. So we got the tools. It's very simple, basic stuff. I'll just kind of show you guys when it's done. But um, yeah, not so bad. It's, uh, it's a fine finish pro finish uh, cement, so I gotta see it's more trial and error, and I'll keep you guys posted on how everything turns down. By the way, the wood on the floor is just to catch the water, so my floor doesn't get totally screwed over. So, half a gallon of water, and a full glass of coffee later, we're almost done. Took me about, I'd say, three and a half hours to do this. I was pretty much by myself until my brother came in towards the end, so obviously two people would be, be a big deal. All right, guys, bye.